Welcome back for another video. Today, we're going to be talking about the Commander's new ownership group and what having this new ownership group means for the Commanders as a team and what it means for their future, their fans, everything in between. And, and obviously, when you when you start talking about the ownership group, you have to talk about you know Dan Snyder being out for the Commanders and what that means for them. That's that's ultimately going to be great for the organization. Like it's been a toxic culture with him there. All the allegations that are underway with Dan Snyder, like it was just a matter of time before he was out of the league, essentially getting pushed out. I don't know if it will ever come out that they're actually pushing him out. Uh, but Dan Snyder it was just a matter of time before he got out. And the new owners coming in, not only is it a breath of fresh air, Having, having new people in that are not Dan Snyder. Um, but there is a lot of experience coming in with the new owners. And the new ownership group for the commanders consists of Josh Harris, Mitchell Rails, and Magic Johnson. So getting a little bit of background on who these new owners are. Josh Harris is 58 years old, and he made his money in private equity. In the sports world, he's a managing partner for the 76ers in the NBA, the New Jersey Devils, in the NHL, and Crystal Palace in the Premier League in Europe. Now, that alone is very promising, having that sort of experience, being a managing partner in three different sports, three different major sports, you know, Premier League, you know, over here in the U.S., we may not, you know, be too hip on the Premier League. If you don't know about it, the Premier, Premier League is, is one of the biggest leagues in the world. And having experience in all those, being, being a managing partner, is going to be vital. Now, Harris has already had some experience in the NFL um, as he's had a mi minority stake in the Steelers, which because of the deal uh, of him taking the commanders, he's going to have to sell off his stake in the Steelers. But he has some experience in the realm of the NFL as well. And moving on to Mitchell Rails, he's 66-year-old Pittsburgh native with a net worth of $5.6 billion. He was raised in money. Uh, and his father seemingly passed along all the knowledge he had in real estate. Um, I believe his father owned a real estate company and passed on that knowledge in, in the real estate world and other philanthropic ventures. And Mitchell Rails uh, took advantage of that, obviously being you know, a billionaire. He took advantage of all the knowledge that was passed down. And with that knowledge, he started and evolved multiple different businesses, including the medical giant Innovis and even a private art museum in Maryland. Now, Magic Johnson, if you're watching this, you don't know who Magic Johnson is. I implore you, uh, after this video, go look up some Magic Johnson NBA highlights. Like, Magic Johnson is is basically is one of the reasons the NBA is what it is today. Like, him and Larry Bird and the rivalry that was there with the, the Lakers and the Celtics uh, and the battles that they had gave the NBA – national prominence in the 80s and 90s and, and basically evolved it to what it was you know michael jordan comes along and, and it really explodes so magic johnson is is a big reason why the nba is what it is today and was an amazing player one of the best point guards to ever play the game now he was forced out and and had to retire from the nba due to contracting hiv um, but has since become obviously a an advocate for HIV and AIDS. But beyond that, he's had his hand in all kinds of different businesses. You know, like a lot of people talk about Shaquille O'Neal and all the businesses that he's involved in. Like Magic Johnson looks the same. Like his his portfolio is very diverse. And when you talk about some of the businesses that he's been involved with, you know, some of that is sports ownership experience, being a fractional owner of the Los Angeles Dodgers who, since he's been involved, have had a lot of success and have been one of the best teams in Major League Baseball. Now, he was also in the front office um, and held a front office position for the Lakers for, for a short period of time. So he has that experience uh, as well. So having all of these owners together, like you put these three together, they're, they're years of experience in the sports world and everything they know about business. Like This is, is one of the best things that could have possibly happened for the commanders as an organization and their fans and their team as a whole. Dan Snyder being out and everything that comes along with Dan Snyder, you're pushing that out. And, and again, getting that breath of fresh air coming in with new ownership, a diverse ownership group of people that have many years of experience in the sports world. 
And, and I think what they'll be able to bring, you know, it, it's not just going to show up on Sundays. Like, yes, it will in the long term show up on Sundays. And the commanders, like any other franchise, will go through the ebbs and flows. You know, they, they currently have to find, you know, a franchise quarterback and a long term answer at quarterback before you really talk about a fran- franchise that's going to have long term success. But I think what they've been able to do on Sundays having Dan Snyder around and showing resiliency under Ron Rivera for the last few years. I think over the next few years, as they continue to rebuild the franchise and the product of what you'll see on Sunday, they're going to continue to rebuild things that happen behind the scenes, right? Like, you know, obviously there's going to have to be immediate renovations to FedEx field. That is one of the worst fields, you know, as a, as a football field and as a stadium as a whole, like the whole thing needs to be renovated. It's one of the oldest stadiums in the NFL right now. Um, so they're going to have to renovate that. They're already talking about finding a place to be able to build a new stadium for the commanders at some point. I mean, they've already committed to keeping the commander's name long-term. You know, there, there was some speculation that it might be a short-term thing whenever there's new owners. Maybe they go in a different direction. They're committed to the commanders and, and building around the brand that was decided on uh, shortly before they, they arrived. So, again, short-term, what can you expect? It's just building blocks. You can expect them to continue to set up building blocks to be great in the future. But ultimately, I think the future is very bright for the commanders, for both on the field, for the fans. Like this is this is huge for the commanders and for the NFL as a whole. Having Dan Snyder in the NFL, uh, you, we had to get him out at some point. You know what I mean? So uh, it's going to be good to have Washington uh, be the level of class that they should be. And we'll see if they're able to turn things around on the field. I would love to know what you think about the new ownership group and what it means for the commander, short-term, long-term, all that. You let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to keep coming back for more off-season content. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you for the next video.